The story of the ocean liners is one of many things. Of technology, of triumphs, of failures, of war, of finances, of foolishness, amongst other things. In particular, the Olympic class and the Mauritanians. Two rival companies warring with each other constantly on who provides the fastest and most comfortable journey. Two of these ships were lost to war. One of these ships was lost to foolishness and incompetence. But two lived a full life. These two were scrapped side by side. Back then, rivals, competitors. Now, colleagues and friends. It was before the days of the Second World War that these ships had their greatest triumphs. Fast or comfortable, for richer, for poorer, better built and whatnot. All these ships are equal now. But what if things were different? What if their places were altered? What if they survived past the depression? And what if a bacteria had a role to play in it? On the 17th of June, 1911, the RMS Olympic, en route to New York, found adrift in the ocean, the lost Mauritania. The ship had been missing for about three months. It was discovered with all of its hull paint completely stripped off, exposing the white underbelly that it had in its launch. Columns of something seemed to be coming out from various portals. A crew of 23 were ordered to investigate. Only 20 came back, and passengers reported a foul stench coming out from the Mauritania.
Good evening, sir. Now, before we start, I'd like to make it perfectly clear that if you want to leave the room at any time, or you want to write down your account instead of telling us, we're entitled to do so. I'm perfectly comfortable speaking, thank you very much. Right, well, what is your name? My name is Jonathan Lurie. I was the helmsman aboard the Olympic from 1911 to 1914, and again from 1919 well until 1939. Really? Uh, what happened between... Now then, could you tell us what happened the night you discovered the Mauritania? Of course. It was June 17th, 1911. We were sailing on the route to New York, when suddenly, something appeared upon the horizon. One of the officers on deck told me to slow down, so I did. I took a closer look, it turns out, there was another ocean liner. Four chimneys it had. Brought the captain on deck and took a good look. And he then realised what the ship was. It was the Cunard liner, the Mauritania. Missing for several months by this point. They were all amazed. They all thought it had sunk with all 2400 passengers and crew. He asked for 23 of us to go on deck to the Mauritania to find any signs of life and signs of disappearance. I I joined the party, as it were, to investigate. There were 23 of us, total. I was with a fellow of mine named Jones. Jones was very nervous and jittery, and if we drew near, I could see why. The ship, to put it bluntly, was a floating wreck. Several things were clinging to the ship, and the smell. Oh, I can still remember that putrid smell. And when we got aboard, things got weirder still. The roster aboard said that in total, 2,400 or more passengers and crew boarded the Mauritania en route to England. But when we got aboard, not one of them were left. The ship was completely deserted. The luggage was still in the rooms, there are jackets and frocks waiting to be worn, but not a soul left alive on that ship. And most frightening of all was this thing coiling around the ships. Various features. There was a form of poison ivy coiled around various structures of the ship. At least, I thought it was ivy. But then I wondered how the hell could ivy get on a ship like this? What was it like? Okay. What was this structure like? Well, I just said it. it. coils around the object like a load of poison ivy. I didn't dare touch it. But Jones placed his hand on a small suction of it. What did it feel like? What did he say? Well, I... He wouldn't dare say. When I pressed him further, he said it felt like a rotting corpse. I didn't dare touch it after that. Further below deck, there was more and more of this ivy-like structure. They started calling it mush. But as we went further below decks, closer to the engine rooms, I could hear a faint beating. A faint and beating. What was it like? The beating. Well, uh, it 
felt like a heartbeat inside the engine. The ship had a pulse and a heartbeat. Well, at that point I lost my nerve. Jonesy and I both asked to be relieved and go back to the, the Olympic. But the commanding officer, the, the right there, he said, No, we're staying right where we are. He at least allowed us to go back on the road. Three men, Walker, Godfrey and Sponge, continued farther down. We didn't see them after that. There was something on that ship. There was something on the Mauritania. I swear there was something there. There's a reason Sponge, Godfrey and Walker haven't been seen since. They were doomed from the start, they were. Doomed, they were doomed. Whatever that blasted thing was, that bloody poison ivy was, it claimed them all. Mr. Lowry, please calm down. I heard rumour that the very same was on the Lusitania as it sank beneath the waves. Spikes of that... Ivy shot from that chimney and split them open as it went below the waves. I've seen from my own eyes what happened to that Mauritania. She was a floating wreck. This shit doesn't happen by itself. Mr. Lowry, please tell me. Tell me what was on that ship. Tell me what was on both the ships. I know you know. You have to know. You know that I'm not allowed to tell you, Mr. Lowry. Liar. You are nothing more than a liar. Just tell me. Tell me what was on that ship. Tell me what was on the Mauritania and the Lusitania. Just tell me. Mr. Lowry, please calm down. I simply... Tell me. Tell me. You're going to tell. Just tell me. But... <coughs> Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry, are you all right? Are you okay? Do you need to Do you need to see a doctor? Mr. Lowry. I'm fine. Please. Just tell me what was on that ship. Tell me what was there. I mean no harm. I know you know. Please. <laughs> Mr. Lowry, this isn't my decision. I physically cannot tell you what is going on. I'm very sorry. Let's see. Will that be all? Yes, that will be all. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. I'm sorry if this is too much for you. Very well, then. A good day.